monsieur Mer de veiller une dernière fois à ne rien oublier dans le temps, y compris votre bagage sous votre siège. Merci. Votre vigilance. We made it to Avignon, and of course we found a Starbucks. We are waiting for to be picked up by Shirley and Julie. It's really gorgeous here, small train station, so pretty easy to navigate. Um, interesting thing is, is that we see a lot more police here than we saw all in Paris. They look pretty chill though, I think they're just sort of hanging out, Nothing, nothing's happening here. So we'll just wait, have coffee, and then be picked up. Oh my gosh, Julie, how did you even find these chateaus? Is it from the internet or word of mouth? Actually, or? this chateau found me. Uh, Gabby is a painter, and she was following me on oh. Instagram and things. And then when I was running a workshop for Ramel here, she came to that. She goes, oh, you're running a workshop at last. I go, yes, it's for Ramel Little Tari. She goes, I want to give you an idea. Excuse me, I'm going to work out. So anyway, she came. And that's where I met her, and I met her. Not on the oh night, but I have that on the Olympus. I should investigate it sometime, so I did. I came oh, out so here, must have actually, I, have a I can show you. Yeah. I can show stay you. here, right. instead of a cheap Airbnb, I'm just going to stay here for a few days. Right. Okay. On, I missed the highlight. That's the highlights are more important. Yeah. On digital, so we're right like on the slide village, so you know, yeah. So on slide film, here, so yeah. you had nice. to worry about the highlights because if they were blown out, out you, you couldn't get it back. All, all you have is just clear acetate on the slide. There's we should be filming this camera talk. Now, when you shoot negative film. Like right. we would shoot on films when yeah. I was in film school. Right. You had to shoot for the for the shadows because if you think of the negative, the lights actually have the darkness on it, and right. then the shadows go clear. Yeah. And so you had to be very careful. It was always like all the cinematographers would say, shoot for the shadows, right, and then expose for the highlights. Right. So digital is like slide film, where once you've blown something out, there's no information. There's a big area of like all white. It's mm -hmm. nothing. So it's nothing. It doesn't matter. It's just Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Oh, look at how tiny this little road is. You have to really, I know. Usually you don't want any white areas in a painting. If it's blinking, you'll know just back off like, you know, a slight bit. So that's very helpful for you. Because if you go dark, it's easier to bring it back. Yeah. Sure, are you in that? Okay, yeah, shooting raw and light. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mama Bear, we are back in town. <laughs> Mama Bear. <laughs> Oh my god, this is great. Scott and I are walking into the small little town and this is what it looks like. It's only about maybe an eight minute walk from the chateau. It's a little windy, so I guess they have something called the Mistral, or Mistral which is like these strong winds that last for three days, they say. It's quite warm, but the winds are too strong to actually paint in. So today is an organizing day. Scott and I are going to go look around. Oh, look at this beautiful, look at this sweet little market. Oh, I guess we're going to buy stuff. We will definitely, bonjour, we'll definitely buy stuff on the way back. And um, we're just kind of seeing what's in town. I love how this person has just made these little pots just decorative. And we're walking towards this old building at the end of the street. It's leading us to it. This is so charming. So this is the town of Noves. N-O-V-E. And remember, it's, it's really kind of overcast right now, so the light isn't super strong, but could you imagine? It's just paintable like it is, but even with like a strong 
sunlight, maybe with like the blue, blue sky behind it. There's lots of areas here you could stand and paint. And these trees are so charming, how they um, trim them. So I asked Scott, he carries a compass around, so if you're going to go out and landscape paint, it's a great idea to have a compass. My phones oh yeah, no, on your phones, but just to think about it. Okay. So the sun is coming up in this way and going this way. So that's what you think about when you're looking at the building. It's coming up from the right here, going over straight above, and then going to go this way. So if we were to come back, maybe in the late afternoon, you know, this will be in light, and then shadow will be on this side. Yeah. I know. And it's so quiet. Monument Historique Inglés Saint Odile. Oh, wow. These doors. These, so these are metal doors. So yeah, this is all kind of bronze. Very, very, you know, patinaed. So the door was slightly ajar, and I mean, I'm sure they keep this open for locals, but it is pitch black in here. You know, the phone is adjusting and making it lighter. Of course, our eyes are adjusting too. It, you know, it smells very um, musty, because <laughs> if you could imagine, like, how old are these floors? How old are the walls? And there's not, like, ventilation. So... You know, it, when you first open it, it's like walking into someone's basement. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so lovely. Churches are special. You do feel like you're walking back in time, like you're Joan of Arc. It looks like they're they're kind of doing a little bit of construction or rehab over there. That needs to be rehab too. One lonely candle. Wow. So Scott and I are thinking it'd be amazing to have a model in here. If I could, I'd bring the class here. Scott, yeah. don't you think it might be neat to have the class come and talk about posing models in here? What you have to do like with your ca cameras and how to adjust for it. And Look at this um, man right here. I think he's pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm.
We got here yesterday and this is our art supply store in in Provence. This is the nicest mall I've been in, I swear. This mall is gorgeous. And we're just having fun going to an art supply store. I don't really need anything, but I'm coming here for fun. Seeing what French art supplies are. It's it's like candy. I can't I can I mean I have to look at everything. Paper. Oh, bonjour. <laughs> oh, I just, I don't know. I'm like a kid. I need to look at everything. Do I need anything? No. But, I mean, seriously. Okay, my heart's starting to beat. Oh, my gosh, just fun bags. Look at this. I mean, I, I mean, do I need this? No, but it, is it really pretty? Will it make me happy? Maybe. Okay, I might need one of those. Scott is, um, look at all these beautiful, just booklets. Oh, just for notes. Just pretty booklets for notes. Okay, my heart's pounding. Everybody spread out. We all took a road trip here and they're all just getting stuff. They're getting some art supplies for people who are showing up from other countries that didn't want to travel with them. So Julie does a, you know, she does a A1 job of like making sure everybody, you know, has the most pleasant time. Okay. This is an incredibly nice art supply store. But I'm going to take some time. Oh, I love quilling. Oh my god, I bought tons of quilling stuff a few years ago and have not done it. That is my goal one day. I love papers. Oh, masks. Okay. Alright. Oh, animals. Oh, look at all these little... Oh... I love it. Probably you make these into ornaments and you paint on them. Oh my god, this is too fun. I don't see these in the U.S. stores. No, I don't. This is a much nicer store than what we get. Oh, look at that. Okay, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look seriously now. So this is what I bought. I got very, very, very excited about this paper. It's a heavy duty multi-technique paper, but this green just excited me. It's super, you know, strong, so I can adhere it if I like the painting to a foam gore baby pour afterwards. And even though it's paper, if I'll paint oil on it and I can always varnish it afterwards and seal it completely. So this is um, European sizes, but I'm gonna say it's almost like a six by nine. Oh, maybe six by ten. And then this is kind of close, so maybe it's a tiny bit bigger than a nine by twelve. Perfect for little street scenes, perfect for a portrait. And then they have this fabric, and I don't know what they meant by it, but it says, you know, tissue concept. I don't know. But they're just like little squares, so I thought this was close enough to that paper so I can either have it on the model or behind the model. And then this was a, for another model with dark hair. They didn't have bigger sheets of the um, violet, but they had tissue paper. So I can either make some interesting flowers or just hang this on the wall behind her. Very excited. So they got my, got, and gave me a little bit of adrenaline to come into this art supply store. A perfect way to spray mount um, your paper or loose canvas to some sort of acid-free foam core gator board is a photo mount. Um, so look for acid-free sprays like that. I like that a little bit better than those like brush-on stuff. Eh, you know, sometimes they can get goopy. This is a great thing to use if you like the painting, you know, and you want to frame it. Look at this amazing floor. So that is a painting that they bought of mine from Charleston, uh, South Carolina, Sylvan Gallery. Oh my gosh, and look at how gorgeous this table is. 
but wow, I mean, I just love this floor. This, this is pretty fantastic. But yeah, they've been telling me, she's emailed me before about how she has this painting. I'm at the Chateau in France. I had a slow morning today. I did a tiny little painting to auction off for charity. And the last couple days have been quite windy. So we've been doing just little bits, helping them out. Had dinner with the Chateau owners last night. It was really, really elegant. Um, so I'm having a slow morning. I think it might be 1230 right now. <laughs> so. I think all the worker bees for workshops in France are getting ready for people to show up. And I am gonna go find Scott. So this is the little courtyard. Our bedroom is right in here. And Scott, um, huh. I think he said he's gonna go paint. Looking back at the chateau, probably. Ooh, see this is the chateau right here. It's really, really elegant. And this is the mini phone that they're going to... Hi! <laughs> That's Jerome, our lovely man who's helping. I'm gonna go find Scott. you that there is uh, like a river right next to the property. We have to actually walk over a bridge to get into town. Oh my gosh, sorry, put my hand in front of the camera. I'm not used to doing this. Oh, I'm so happy the wind stopped. Yeah, no, it was pretty windy the last couple days. This is where we hung my laundry yesterday. All right, I, oh, I'm gonna show you this. Lots of gravel. Oh, there he is. Oh my God, I love it when I just spot him out of nowhere. <laughs> there he is. Can you see him? He's there in the shade. All right, let's sneak up on him. Oh my gosh, look at this in here. so manicured. Oh, they have a pool. I didn't bring a swimsuit, so I don't think I'm going to be going into it. Yeah, no, it's pretty idyllic here. Pretty idyllic. I love going out to find you. <laughs> it's sort of like a game. Where is Scott? Yeah. I'm not hiding very well. So. No, you're not yeah. hiding very well. Oh my gosh, Scott, the weather is exceptional. Oh, I'm so happy the wind settled down. Holy yeah, cow. no, it was... Luckily we had a place indoors to paint if we had to. It's so nice, I saw Joan, she came. Joan. Oh, Joan Theron, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, yeah. lovely. She, she just got here, so that's nice. Oh, great. She said she was watching your blog on... Uh, oh, on good, airport, yay. So enjoying seeing Paris. So you're painting this little kind of eating area with the uh, like pergola on yeah, top of this it. Whole thing and up, a little bit up on top. Okay. So, just pretty. Yeah, that would be fun. To give it a try. So and these are some grays that you've already mixed up from before. Yeah, this is a gray. This is a gray. This is a gray. They're left over from scraping my palette in Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I put out fresh paint. And so. you're working on Centurion. Oil this is primed. A centurion, yeah, kind of, yeah. And it's about a 12 by 16. It is 12 by 16. <laughs> Please repeat everything I say. It's not about a 12 by 16. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I must be more factual. <laughs> Just confirming. Confirming the data. We had a relaxing morning. I was so tired. I know. Yesterday. I think I was like, I literally just took a shower, just got out of bed, been doing a lot of computer stuff. It's so nice out here. 
So you drew this out first in like yeah, charcoal. Just sketched it out with a little vine charcoal. charcoal. Maybe five minutes. It just kind of sketched out just to place things so that I don't have things going off. And yeah, because you don't want to. You're not like you're just trying to put the shapes, and then you'll put. Right. You don't need to. I'll blacken make it. these big shapes, but it gives me just the big shapes so that I get my composition the way I want it. Because it's so easy when you just start painting for things to grow or shrink, and then right. all of a sudden you. So and especially when you're painting loose, sometimes you're like, forget, like, oh, you paint over an edge, and then you bring back an edge with another color, and yeah. it's just nice to have that boundary to... No, I'll just bring in some of these big shapes. I'll try to cover all the canvas so I can start judging things better. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, it should be fun. Beautiful colors out here. I've got to try to remind myself not to start doing details. Well, yeah, that's I what I, I mean, even though I'm going to be painting small on this trip, I purposefully did not bring tiny, tiny detail brushes mm -hmm. because it's so easy to, like, start using a zero or a one, especially when you're doing a six by eight, you know? Yeah. It's like, I really want to force myself to use a big, as big a brush as I possibly can for as long as I can because this also, painting outdoors, is not, like, super comfortable for me, so. so it's one o'clock. It's one o'clock. Because I'll probably, I might work on this a couple days in a row. Probably I will, for sure. So I just reminded myself of the time of day. And I thought about where the sun's going this way. So I set up here. I wouldn't set up right on the edge over there because, uh, I mean right on the edge over here because then the sun would move and I'd be in the sun really quickly. So this is kind of a right. nice view. And I know that uh, I will, I won't have to battle things for a while. So yeah, I will decide as this light moves this way, this side is probably going to go into shade. Well, it will go in shade more, which I, when I was looking at this, it was very flat, light against light against light. But knowing that the sun's going this way, I am, I know I'm going to want to paint this in shadow. So I'll just block it in that way too, because then that'll give me this nice light shape here and this light shape here, and it won't just be light against light. All right. Yeah. So you kind of think about that with landscape. It's a little different than when you set up something in the studio. You're, you have to think ahead a little bit plan out where the sun's going. So Scott's going to set up his umbrella, even though he's in the shade. If you see, when you look at his painting, right, everything around the painting is bright. So it's harder to adjust your eye to the values, and you might make your values a little bit darker than they should be. So even though it's a nice day, there's still a few little gusts, baby gusts of wind. So Scott's going to open his umbrella and make the umbrella shade kind of block that super brightness because he's kind of staring into the light. It looks so dark, but now it's looking, I'm looking, I can see the lightness of it because I've got this black area behind yeah, it. Yeah, it just kind of helps your eye adjust yeah. a little bit more. Stand right where I'm at and okay. really see the difference, yeah. See how having that dark behind it? Yeah, it does help. Hopefully the wind won't take it, but you see this string right here that even if the wind does take it, the top will come off, but his and whole easel won't go down. Flying, yeah, right. in the umbrella, it won't keep it from like flying fields away. Yeah. They made this amazing lunch with all these different kind of like quiches and soup and salad. Scott's still painting. So I wonder if I'll be able to get him to stop to eat. People are showing up, friendly, friendly people from all over the world. It always gets me on like such a high to meet people who come and paint, want to paint together. In the sun, right? So uh, I didn't want to blow out the lights, but the shadows were really dark. And so even when I painted, I had one picture that was maybe great. And then I had another picture that was a little lighter so I could see some of the colors in the shadow. Wonderful. That's so, great. I didn't even know. I've never used bracket on this one, but you do it every time. So you there to show the three. three shots. No, it's the next three shots, it will bracket it at those right. different exposures. So you can go up. I think you can go up to five on this, but maybe you can't. Three, three okay, three. So it's matter. three is what you can do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, awesome. and, then, and then you can change this. So you could do one frame. Yeah. So when you're at three, basically, it says plus three, but... That's uh, three frames, but it's one, uh, it's like the exposure stop. difference, right? So go one ahead, stop go ahead and take That's three frames. Take, take this Talking about bracketing on an icon and how 
how it helps you shoot for the lights and for the shadows. Whoa! Oh, hey, I caught it on film! <laughs> Here scouting out locations. We're on a vista with poppies and mountains, gorgeous weather, and this is all the crew with vans and cars and people taking photos. So we're walking up the hill. Oh, it's so beautiful. And we're gonna see what this church on a vista is. Yeah, the light looks nice now too. So can you tell where is north so that you can see where the light's gonna be? Oh yeah. North is that way. The sun will be going this way. Okay, so the shadows the shadows seem to be nice in the morning because if the light is hitting here, it's going to hit the door go full way. on. Yeah. Okay, this should stay. This must be. Well, this is south facing, so this will have sun on it most of the day. Yeah. Of course, I should have brought my sunglasses. It's really perfect weather. I mean, even in the sun, you're not hot. I really think you could do a painting in the morning, painting in the evening, just staying in this spot. Oh, there's like a church way up there. Oh my God, I have to keep walking? Wow, this is so pretty. No, where should I paint? Oh my gosh. Here comes Emilio. I was just wondering if it would be better to paint up here. No, no, no. Maybe not right here, but maybe down where you see that church and the vista behind it. Because in town, painting that church you know, will people be able, if I have to sit on the side of the road, sure. so maybe not, maybe up here. Anywhere, so you, you yeah. Well, yeah, but no, I also have to think about at least having people sit behind me. Right. The tub has such bathrooms and things for everybody and all that as well, so. Yeah. Painters everywhere. I know. Oh, there's a little sculpture up there. Mother, probably Mary. This is cool. Nice. That's what I love here because no matter what kind of landscape you're into, it has it all. It's good fun. And then add a little bit. So my thicker strokes are in the foreground. Can you guys see yeah. that? Yeah. So it gets thinner and thinner and thinner. My yellows are in the foreground and it gets bluer and bluer and pinker and pinker. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth to this roof to kind of make it pretty. So I'm adding a little bit of brown, a little bit of this orange. Because I kind of painted this when it was slightly overcast, I'm just, if I put a few strokes of warm on top of this, but then you still have a little bit of this pink, so I'm kind of dragging it. We'll see. 
I might need to make it a little bit lighter. Sometimes you're sweet. Now I just need to document that Scott painted outdoors. For, that it's true. For yeah. IRS purposes. Exactly. Oh, look at how <laughs> chunky that is. See, I was talking a lot about making it thick in the foreground uh -huh. and then thin as you get back. Yeah, I, 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 it was good that I didn't have a lot of time since I knew you were going to be fast. Well, it yeah, it's very, very simple, chunky you know? in the foreground. Yeah, it forced me to just be simple. Yep. Well, and you can always add a little bit of thickness later in the back, too. Because yeah. you have all the values correct, and yeah. this is... no, I just thought it would be fun to just try to get the atmosphere. The sun has come out, and we all had to stop painting. We're going to go to lunch because it was overcast earlier, and now it's gorgeous sun. Clouds are so exciting today. This is the middle of the day, so it's about 2.30, so the clouds are all backlit. And my job is to go and find people. So there's Mary Beth. She's painting the vista. The sun is going in and out today, so we're all having to practice a little bit of patience and, um, you know, how to go with the flow. I know those are gigantic, but they oh the wildflowers are so pretty. 